Okay, so uh, right now I'm in the tent and uh, this is going to be absolutely awesome. So I've got my kit bag just outside and uh, let's set up. Okay, so this is my kit bag. Uh, here it is, in all its mighty glory. I've got my roll in there. Everything else is in here. It's an Osprey. And uh, here is my tent. It is a Van Gogh Banshee 200, so it's a single man tent, and it does the job nicely. It's almost the same size as me. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I'm wrapped up in my sleeping bag. In the morning, we'll be waking up early, early and uh, going and checking out my uh, spots where the deer normally are and uh, having a look if there are any there. And if there are, that would be fantastic. And I also know a place where there are badgers, so there might be badgers about potentially. And I'm uh, all nice and wrapped up. I've got my gloves here in case it's cold. And I've got my nice warm fleece here that I'm using as a pillow. And. Uh, this is going to be fantastic. So I'll turn you off for now and uh, catch up with you in the morning. Okay, so it's uh, it's one o'clock in the morning and um, this sleeping bag is doing really well. It's about uh, five degrees out the south side. It's quite a clear night, so it's really, really chilly. And uh, I'm feeling absolutely snug as a bug in a rug in this tent and this awesome sleeping bag. And, um, down at the other end of the tent. I have all my kits, my bag, and my other stuff, and this tent, tent fits me perfectly. And uh, it's awesome. So uh, I just wanted to give you that update, and uh, yeah, I will uh, catch up with you in the morning. Okay, guys, so it's. Uh I think it's maybe about five o'clock in the morning, and uh, the morning morning bird chorus is happening, and it's really, really lovely. That's a magpie. So uh, in a minute, I'm going to get up, and uh, and then now uh, we can go and uh, do some photography. Okay, so uh, we will soon be approaching the woods and uh, I'm gonna turn you off for now and then I will uh, just turn you back on if we find the deer. But the sunrise over there is absolutely spectacular and uh, yeah, so is a bird song. So uh, let's go. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, yeah. Okay. There are deer, there are deer. You're coming with you, I'm leaving the bag, okay? Okay. It was a male and he was just travelling across.
across the field. Let's see where it is. Okay, so uh, at the moment we're trying to track down the deer, but uh, yeah, this is going to be quite intense. And I think he's just gone down this small, small slope. So I'm just going to stick to the edges of the path and uh, hope that we see him. The deer is just down there. The deer is just down there. He's just, he's just beyond, just across there. So uh, I'm going to have to go down, turn you off and track him. So the last I saw of the deer, it was making its way along here and leading into those woods over there. So uh, I think I might just take a small look in the woods and then if I can't see I'll just head back, go collect my bag and... Uh... After this happened, I decided not to follow or stress the deer. So I decided to go back to my bag and tuck into my apple and my juice. And that was that. Okay, so uh, I've decided I'm going to show you how to make a uh, fire bow and what you'll need for this, you'll need one, uh, about a foot long of, uh, not rotten wood, but hardwood, so it's been aged a little bit, and uh, yeah, then you'll need about two feet of uh, freshly cut a uh, new uh, new wood. I, I I would recommend using hazel just because it's really really straight and uh, it's quite flexible as well. So you'll need that. And then you'll also okay, so I spent a total of about five hours creating the uh, bow and all the instruments to go with it, and also using the uh, bow to try and start a fire. But unfortunately, after five hours of uh, toil and sweat. Nothing came of it, and uh, the closest I, the closest thing I had to a fire was a small puff of smoke, and uh, it just wasn't working for me. I don't have the strength in my shoulders to to create enough momentum going forward and backward and creating the enough friction to create the ember from the pieces of wood. Uh, so I reverted back to the old faithful flint and steel, which I always carry in my bag along with matches, just so uh, if if I need to, to to create a fire for any reason, I will uh, be able to have them there. So I uh, reverted back, as I said, to the good old flint, flint and steel and about when it was turning dark I uh, lit a fire in the woods and uh, sat down and enjoyed the smoky air. <laughs>